Uh, good morning. The only reason I'm using a microphone is because we're doing Zoom in case anybody wants to attend virtually. Um, hi. <laughs> we're just doing that camera angle. So this is a traditional for us, a family tradition of leading the Christmas morning service in a really casual way, as you can see. We're in our pajamas. We, it, we started this in Massachusetts, and we lived half a block from the church. And that was before I was a minister, but the minister then asked us to lead the Christmas morning service so she could have a break, so we would walk over in our pajamas and do this. And it has continued to be a family tradition, so here we are with you all this morning. And I, first, I want to say that Sue Titus Reed, who is our pianist, is our guest pianist today. She's quite accomplished, and he has, she has shared with us the list of carols that she feels accomplished at playing. So um, we can do a carol sing where you can pick the carols within the limits of that list. So that's all that list means. But th this is very informal. So you get to choose your carols. Here's the list I passed out, which is the one you sent me. And um, you'll find all those carols in your red hymnal. And we'll probably, well, maybe we'll do two verses of any carol that we sing. The people in Zoom, like Sandy, who I know is there, um, will we'll cross fingers that um, they know at least the first verse of those hymns, because we're not putting up lyrics today. Uh, so keeping it really simple this morning. And it's, again, not a formal service also in that we're not passing out a bulletin. This is really spontaneous, and it's all about who's here and what we share together. So we are glad that you came this morning um, and made it special for us for coming out as well. With that, I want to call us into a moment of prayer. Oh, holy God, be with those of us who have chosen to gather this morning in this space. Be with those of us who gather across distance and time to be here with us. Be with those who are safely at home with their families or with their friends. Be with all who need connection are, are alone today. Be with those who are working on this day. We ask that you will be present we celebrate that you have been born into the world, but now we ask that you will be present to us. Renew the light within us that we may go out into the world bearing your light, bearing your love for other people, and also see in the faces that we meet along the way, your light and love reflected in others for all of us are your children, children of God, children of light. In your name we pray, amen. At the very end of this service, we will we'll give everybody candles and we'll sing Joy to the World. So let's hold Joy to the World for the end of the service. And right before we do that, if you all have any prayer concerns, we will um, share those. And then we will hold the light for each other. And then we will celebrate with Joy to the World. Right? And for this morning, what we usually do is we share a, a story that has become a favorite in our family. So it's not a piece of scripture, but I think you will hear within it the embodiment of what love means when love comes born in, in the shape of a child into this world. This is vulnerability, right? I mean, love didn't show up as a great king or a judge or a warrior. Love showed up as an infant in a feeding trough with parents who were very poor. And that child needed all the support he could receive from his parents, from his community, from strangers who came to visit him and warn him of his family that he was in danger. He needed his parents to feed him, nourish him, clothe him, love him, teach him what it meant to be a man of faith, he needed us, and in that needing and in that vulnerability, he created the reciprocity, the intimacy of a very love and a close, in, close relationship that we still consider to be part of what it means 
to be Christians who celebrate the coming of Christ into the world as a child who grew up to show us what it means to have deep intimacy with the most unlikely of people and to see holiness in all people and to walk with love out into the world, seeking connection. This is the story that my family loves. It's the story of the little pine. There was a kingdom far away from here. Very wintry though, like this one. It grew wonderful fir trees and pine trees. And those trees vied to become the chosen tree of the winter court of the queen. She came every year and she would walk into the, well, her woodsman would walk into the woods and select the trees, but she would come by sleigh and she would inspect the trees herself and personally approve the one that would be taken back on the sleigh to be decorated and celebrated at her court during the Christmas season. And part of the job that we all have during this story is that every time you hear me say bell, you have to ring your bells. So as it happens, there was a grove of firs and pines. And among them was Little Pine. Little Pine was straight, beautiful, prickly, green, wonderful, uprising boughs perfect bark, smooth and reaching for the sky. Little Pine promised to be a wonderful tree. And Little Pine was surrounded by other proud fir spruce trees who also hoped that they would be chosen in their time by the queen. And when the forester came through, he marked the young trees that he thought the queen should look at in a year or two but a year can change the life of us and it can change the life of a pine. During the course of the brutal winter where the pines were a little bit more dormant but waited to grow and become the chosen tree of the queen, so many things happened. A rabbit came running through the snow and the winds were howling, the snow was bitter, and the rabbit was shivering and in danger for its life because it was being chased by a predator. And Little Pine saw it coming closer and closer. And Little Pine reached a bow down just slightly. And the rabbit scuttled in under its bow and hid sheltered there between the drifts of snow and little pines bent bow. And the drifts froze and the rabbit stayed there until it was safe and it could run off again and find a warmer place. But little pines bow was frozen into the drift and it was forever bent. And then as the storms grew worse and the winds continued to howl, a bird blew, blew from the gusts of wind into that grove of trees and fluttered and found a spot in little pines, deep boughs. And it nestled there and little pine made room for the bird. And the bird stayed there through the night, through the howling winds and little pine wrapped himself around the bird. And when the bird flew away, leaving its feathers in the bow, there was a hole where the bird had been. And then as deer do, desperate for food, one came stalking with its long legs up over the drifts. And it looked at little pine and little pine opened his boughs just enough that the deer could nibble from the green tender shoots and of the bark. And the deer survived the winter 
but little pine had bare spots and naked parts where his bark had been eaten away. And by the time the forester came, bells ringing into the woods, leading the sleigh with the queen's proud team of horses with all of their bells chiming in the wind. Little Pine didn't look like such a perfect specimen anymore. And the other spruce around him were murmuring, I'm sure I'll be the one chosen by the queen. That one, never. Little Pine stood there knowing that he had a bent branch, that he had holes, that he had bare spots, that he was no longer the perfect erect tree that each of them dreamed of being so that they could go to the queen's court where people would dance and ring their bells and fill the room with light and heat and celebrate the end of a year, the beginning of a new year, the coming of love into the world. Little Pine had heard the stories and he had dreamed, but he didn't believe that he would be chosen. How could he be? And the forester walked into the grove and there were the bows that he had tied on the trees that he suggested that the queen look at. And her sleigh pulled up with the last ringing of the bells. She stepped in her furs out of the sleigh and she walked cautiously into the grove and she looked at the tall spruce, the gorgeous fur, and the bent, bare pine. And she looked quite puzzled beneath her fur cap. And she turned to the forester with her hands open. And she asked, why is this one marked? And the forester said, last year, that pine was perfect, just like that spruce just like that fur, things have happened over the winter. And the queen looked again, and she saw the prince of the deer leading to the tree with its naked bark and its missing tufts of needles. And she saw the feather from the bird wedged in where there was an empty spot where the bird had sheltered. And she saw the tufts of fur at the base where the bow was bent and still frozen into the drifts of snow. And as she read the story that Little Pine couldn't tell her in words, she began to see what love had done. That Little Pine had given away the dream of being a perfect tree that little pine could make of himself shelter, sustenance, hope, and life itself for other creatures who too were struggling to live, to survive. And as she read the feathers and the tufts of fur and the naked parts of the tree, she turned to the forester with the ring of the bells on her wrist And she said, this is the tree. We'll cut down this tree and we'll bring it to my court and we will celebrate. And the forester, this tree, this tree, this is the tree that I want at the heart of my court that my people may see the story of what love will do. And he cut down the tree and he put it on her sleigh and with another bright ringing of the bells, the horses turned around and the sleigh rode from the deep groves and the high places down into the city, out into her court. And they took the tree off the sleigh. And as they were carrying it through the town, people were saying, what happened to the tree? And they followed and they put up the tree and they decorated it with berries and lights 
and beautiful bows, but it still was bent and naked and it had holes in it and nothing could disguise its imperfection. And then the queen called for the musicians to play and they rang their bells and they piped and the people began to tap their feet and to dance and the queen led them in a round of dancing around the tree. And as people danced around the tree and they saw the feathers and the fur and the nakedness of the tree, they began to read the story that the queen too had seen. She brought home not perfection into her court, but she brought home one who gave of himself that others might live. She brought home to them the imperfection of what it means to love others because it will break you and change you and transform you forever. And you may not look like people's imagination of what is perfect, but you are the embodiment of love because you make yourself vulnerable just as the one, the Messiah that they were celebrating that night makes of himself love that is vulnerable love that will draw as close as our cheek to wipe a tear away, that will put his body in the path of danger and risk death itself, experience death itself, and come back from death itself to see us, to connect with us, and be a love that changes the world forever. They danced and they rang their bells. And everyone remembered the Christmas that the little pine became the Christmas tree in the Queen's winter court. Thanks be to God. Can you hear the story of Christ in that story? We tell that story every year. It was, we have two children, one of them is living. Um, that was our younger daughter who lived with cancer for six years. It was her favorite story. And she requested it over and over again, even when she was in the hospital. And when she died, we told that story at her service because she understood the story and it meant so much to her. And it said a lot about how the people around her and how she herself lived and how she hoped that we would all continue to live and love each other. And so that story is burned into our hearts. And for us, it is indeed hope and life and love. And we share it with you as a gift from our children, from our family on this Christmas day. Now, let's sing. So why don't we look at the caroling list? And um, like I said, we'll end with Joy to the World, but everything else is fair game. And remember, there's hymnals here in your pews, so you can pick a, a hymnal. And then once somebody calls out a song you want to sing, 137. All right, we're going to start with 137, Sue. Park the Herald Angels Sing. I'm turning off my microphone. Well, I can't. Sandy, do you need me to sing, like be a song leader? Or can you do this? I'm good. Thank okay. you. <laughs> that's our disembodied angel that's out in Ohio. She's one of our Zoomers.
foot on the mountain. Oh, that's Joy to the World. We're going to end with Joy to the World. So let's hold that one. So what other one sounds good? Silent Night, 142. Um, two verses. All right. How about a little time of octopus? Are you guys still looking at the list? I want to give you a chance to pick one. Did we do 134? No, we're going to do that last. We're going to do that last with the candles. That's the only reason we're not singing it yet. 149, it came upon a midnight clear. It's beautiful. Oh, all right. So here we go. It came upon a midnight all right, two verses. Are you good with that one? Is it there? Well, yeah, it's all there. Oh. Oh. All right. <laughs>
Lucy. We're going to um, pass out candles now. See, the candles are in the bin in the front if you want to grab them. And we're going to do a light from the Christ candle again and then pray together. Um, what We're going to pray first, then light the candles so nobody gets burned fingers. And then we're going to sing one verse of joy to the world, at least holding the candles. I'm not sure we can do all three verses holding the candles. So we'll go for one verse. How's that sound, Sue? All right. So, um, yeah. So friends, this is that time during the service when we want to invite your prayers. Forgive me, I'm going to repeat what you say. I don't have the, um, unless Chris, do you want to get the microphone out that's the wireless mic? It's in the deacon's closet in the case. The people in Zoom can't hear you unless you um, use the microphone. So we're, we try to keep this a two-way thing. So Sandy, if there are people in Zoom who want to raise up a prayer, we're going to start with any prayers of concern, and then we're going to move to prayers of celebration. Is there anybody in Zoom who would like to pray? It's all quiet. Oh, no, wait, Sarah and Nero. Oh, okay, Sarah, do you want to, do you have a prayer of concern? Yeah, just prayers for mental health for everybody I guess like as we're going through COVID and it's not going away and just prayers for mental health because I feel like a lot of people are being affected by COVID right now and have been so just prayers for happy holidays for everybody. That one's not wireless. It's in a black case that clicks. Close. Um, Sarah, thank you for prayers for mental health for um, those. My daughter's a nurse and she works with COVID patients among others and has done for the whole time. Um, so for those who are living with the effects of COVID, which is almost all of us at this point, we know somebody who's had it, maybe people we have loved to have died due to it or have had health challenges because of it or business challenges, just challenges to our lives. Uh, we pray for a way through, and we continue to pray for resilience and hope and healing throughout these times, and that includes both bodily, spiritual, emotional, psychological, mental health. Sandy, any other prayers of concern in Zoom? No. Okay. Anybody here in the sanctuary have a prayer concern that you would like to raise up? And we're starting with concerns and going to celebrations. Sue's got a concern. Just make sure the microphone's on, Sue. Good morning. My prayer of concern is for the safety of all of our people that are traveling. Mm. I hope that they get to their destination safely and return home. God bless them all. Thank you. Prayers for the journey, for the leaving and the returning and the path along the way. Any other prayers of concern here in the church? We've got two of them. That we'll have uh, world peace and be able to get along and world, live as one. World peace and get along and live as one. Can, Chris, can you check the light on there? Make sure it's on. Okay. If you just hold it close, then folks will be able to hear you. Merry Christmas, and thank you for sharing your wonderful service. Um, as parents, we would like to hope that our son finds peace and tranquility in his life. Mm -hmm. And for our society, we hope and pray that kindness and respect returns once again. Prayers for our children. Prayers, multiple prayers here for peace, tranquility, civility, that peace will prevail in our relationships, in our communities, in our world. Any other prayers of concern? Then we turn to prayers of celebration. 
and Sandy again in Zoom. Are there any prayers of celebration? Yes, I have a prayer of celebration. Um, uh, my niece is arriving from South Carolina today, so very happy that she will be here to share a week with us. And also just um, so incredibly thankful and happy to hear Sue play the piano today. It's absolutely Aww. beautiful. <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. So gratitude for music, gratitude for family coming safely to be home with others. I will add to that prayers of gratitude and celebration that my daughter and her husband, Niru, are with us, along with their dog, Momo, and the dog that they are babysitting, Isla. So we have a house full of people, and it's fun to have a house full of people. So we are grateful for the season and the connections it brings back into our lives. Prayers of celebration here in the sanctuary. Sue's got one. <laughs> I don't know about others that are not here in our area, but God has delivered us the most beautiful Christmas morning with gentle snowfall, mild temperatures, and it is just gorgeous <laughs> out there. God bless us. I wish we could share it with you, but all you need to do is look at a picture postcard, and there we are. <laughs> Picture perfect Christmas morning with snow. Other prayers of gratitude, celebration this morning? Happy about anything on Christmas Day? That you're here. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. Sue's got another one. She just likes the microphone to you. I, I do. I do. <laughs> that I'm going to have a new daughter-in-law soon. Oh. So I'm very grateful and we are blessed to have her in our family. Nice. For new connections. Okay, one last chance for happiness and then we're going to light our candles. All right. I'm going to get the Christ light from the Christ light. You guys can sort of pass it to each other. Protect it. So if you want to. Thank you. If you want to maybe mosey over and pass that to Chris. And then Chris can pass it to his neighbors. And his the neighbors can pass it to their neighbors. And let's say that I'm holding the light for Sue Titus Reed too. And uh, if anybody's in Zoom, this is the time we are passing the light. So we invite you to light your candle now and raise it up with us or enjoy its glow from wherever it's safely perched. And we're gonna move to 134.
ask that you carry that light out with you into the world, that you seek out and see and celebrate and nurture that light in others, knowing that each of us is holy, that each of us is a child of light, a child of love, and we are all children of God, every one of us. So this is the promise. Go 